Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have another pair of boots from Red Wing Shoes, the Irish Setter. And this is Irish Setter. The box is so big, it's so hard to open it. Ravine. Now, I wanted to review these boots ever since they came out on the market for sale. I was really impressed. I was really impressed with the looks, with the BOA system, with everything that they provide. And finally, I got a chance to review them. And let me tell you guys, I'm not disappointed at all. These are, even though they're called for some reason hiking boots, I would say more hunting boots, I think a better application than hiking. I'll explain why. The most comfortable, so far, the most comfortable hunting boots that I have reviewed on this channel. So, to give you a very brief overview, currently these boots are running pretty expensive. They're not very budget friendly. They're about $250, $260, depending on where you're buying them. Again, the link is in the description below for Amazon if you want to check it out there. Comfort level is absolutely fantastic. A little bit on the heavier side, but we'll talk about the details later in the review. So if you have time to watch the whole review, let's get into it. As some of you already know, this review is specifically for my ultimate survival boots. Basically, if this was your last boot that you put on and something bad happened, listen, 2020 probably gave you a lot of different ideas of what can possibly go wrong. So I don't even need to come up with examples anymore. You already know. And if this was the boot that you had in your house and you put on and you had to leave your house, you had to walk for extended periods of time, you had to fight on the way to get through, walk through different terrains, would this be a good boot to survive in? How do we make the judgment? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Let's get into it. Criterion number one, comfort level. One of the most important. And let me start by saying one of the things that takes away from the comfort level, of course, is the weight. Like I said, they are on the heavier side. This is size 10. And currently, zero, there you go. And size 10, one boot is 27.4, which is on the heavier side. Usually, I say that if you want to have something lightweight that you're planning to run in, if you want to be speedy, fast, you know, without much of restriction of the movement, you want something that is under 20 ounces. So these are definitely heavier than that. How do I make the testing for my comfort level? I do a three mile run without stopping and a five mile walk. Of course, because of that extra weight, it was a little bit harder to run. After about a mile and a half of running, I started feeling a little bit of fatigue. I started running improperly. Understandable. But, but, let's get into the good side now. Even though they are on the heavier side, because of absolutely amazing amount of padding that you get in these boots, they are absolutely unbelievably comfortable. They give you a very nice wraparound feeling around your foot whenever you put it in. The toe, this is the toe box, the most padded toe box that I have ever tested on this channel. It has very nice padding that is going all the way around. So you can wear these boots literally without the socks on and you still will be very comfortable. It's padded here, it's padded all the way throughout the whole boot on the sides, in the shaft and on the tongue here as well. And it's not just your regular fluffy, cushiony padding. This is actually a very similar to the padding that they use in the insoles to kind of give you a, a very good protection from the impact. It's sort of jelly to the feel, if that makes sense. And here, this is exactly what is being used. And of course, it does come with 400 grams of insulation. So, and we will talk about later, but of course that insulation also adds to that comfort level, to that pad. Let's get into the next one, is the inner sole. And let me take it out and show you how it looks, what it is all about, it is removable. And look at that. Look at all the padding that is provided here. Usually you do get extra padding in the heel area. 
and it's understandable. Whenever you're running, if you're not running properly, you're putting some stress. You know, you're, you're putting your stress on the heel that transfer to the ankles, to the knees. And that's why they usually companies implement extra padding here in the heel area. Here, however, it's not just the heel area. You also have the same exact amount of padding here on the front, which honestly, I am absolutely, absolutely love. So overall, if you can close your eyes on the fact that these boots are on the heavier side, if you are okay with the heavier boot, with some extra protection, with the insulation, waterproof, all that sort of stuff, you definitely gonna love, love, love the comfort level of these boots. If they were not heavier, I would give them a 10 out of 10, but nine out of 10, easily, absolutely without even thinking. Let's get into the criteria number two, which is proofing and protection. So whenever it comes to proofing, I already mentioned they are waterproof. It's the ultra dry waterproofing technology, which is directly from the Red Wing. It's their waterproofing technology. It's nothing fancy like Gore-Tex. I never had any problems with these, with the waterproofing, you know, stepping in the puddles. They handle that without any problems. As you can, can see here, the tongue is gusseted and you do have about six and a half seven inches of height of waterproofing height so pretty good now whenever it comes to the protection as you can see there are extra leather pieces and i absolutely love the fact that it's going all the way around the toe that adds up extra protection besides you do have that padding that also adds the protection uh your heel obviously is reinforced and because there is plenty of padding here a lot more than usually you see in the boots here in the shaft you do have a very very sufficient amount of protection on the ankles so protection wise these are probably in the top in the top not probably definitely in the top 10 of all the boots all the boots not just hunting boots all the boots that i have reviewed on this channel absolutely absolutely love it Okay, so done with that, let's move on to the criteria number three, quality and the design features. Now, quality-wise, Red Wing Shoes, you're probably familiar with that brand. They have been around for a while, since 1950s specifically. So <laughs> they definitely have experience in making the boots. I personally had a few work boots and hunting boots from Red Wing, one of them was a Red Wing work boot and another one was Irish Setter, yes, from Irish Setter. Uh, and I absolutely love them. Great comfort, great features, great protection, no problems, lasted me forever. Uh, so definitely no, no quality issues. They are true to the size, so quality control is definitely great whenever it comes to the Red Wing. Now, regarding the design features, I wanted to point out here obvious this is where usually I talk about the lacing system and here as you can see it is my favorite BOA system which I absolutely love now because I do reviews I try to be as picky as I can possibly be find little things to complain about because I do reviews so that you know exactly what you're getting into and here I have that absolutely minuscule complaint here you go. You ready? You're gonna laugh at it. Here you go. Because this wheel right here, the BOA wheel, has these two posts around them, it's not very comfortable to spin it all the way because it actually stops you every time. You have to switch the position of your fingers to keep going. Yeah, minuscule complaint. If you skip it and ignore it, I completely understand. But just to let you know, some BOA systems, they don't have these posts and you can just spin it without any problems. Here you do have a little bit of that, whatever. Okay, you get the point. Now, uh, the BOA system, if you're not familiar with it, as you can see, there are no strings. I mean, the strings here are actually metal. It's a metal rod that goes, so it's very, very reliable. And uh, actually, Red Wing Shoes, they, on some of the, the boots, I haven't checked on this particular one, but on some of the boots, they actually have the lifetime warranty uh, for these rods. So if you, if you want to check that, check that. Pretty good, uh, you know, additional kind of uh, benefit. Uh, but with the BOA system, basically, you're getting this button, and that's all it is. You're putting in your foot, you pressing the button, it's already pressed, and then you tighten it by spinning it. And that's it, it's nice and tight, evenly throughout the whole boot. And if you wanna release it, all you do is lift the button, and that's it. 
So it's super fast to put these boots on and take them off. And I think it's a huge plus whenever it comes to survival boots specifically. I think Boa system is just the best for survival boots. Okay, so done with the, you know, the quality and the design features, let's move on to the criteria number four, another very important one. Outsole, traction and stability. So one of the things I usually mention in the comfort level is the flexibility of the bottom sole. Another contributing factor to the comfort level. And as you can see, even though the bottom sole, the outsole here is pretty massive, this is, this is uh, there's a little bit, a little bit of the stack. It's just a little bit below one inch on the front and just a little bit below one and a half inch. So maybe half of an inch of the stack. Really, really not noticeable at all. Nothing that would mess with your posture. So don't, don't worry about that. I, I'm not a big fan of huge stacks myself. Uh, but the flexibility of the bottom sole is definitely impressive and it does contribute to the comfort level of the boots. Uh, of course, because it's massive, because there are two different um, rubber, different rubbers involved. One is softer, one is harder. Uh, you do get sufficient amount of protection. But let's talk about the traction and stability. Whenever it comes to the traction stability, it's all about the balance between the aggression and flatness so that these boots handle on a variety of different surfaces. And I test my boots on plenty of different surfaces. I start on an older asphalt, newer tarmac, and then I go into the sand, dry sand, wet sand, dry grass, wet grass, trail surface, rocky road. And then of course, flat surfaces as well, like uh, ma marble and tile. These boots handle very good all of these surfaces because there's a good balance between aggression and flatness. Overall, they do look kind of flat, but don't get, don't get it wrong. These grooves, some of them are very, very aggressive. So I'm definitely, definitely happy with the bottom sole. And there are a little bit kind of ridges implemented here on the sides, which I also like because they do help whenever you are doing some kind of climbing, a rope, a tree, whatever you need to climb, as many things that you can do with your boot, better for your survival. So definitely a plus. Let's move on to the criteria number five, temperature. Now, because these do have 400 grams of insulation, now I personally tested them in about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so not too cold for some of you guys. For me, that's freaking freezing because I'm from Florida, uh, but absolutely no problems. I didn't even need no special insulated socks, nothing. It was definitely way more than enough of insulation. However, if you guys do experience, do have experience with these boots in colder temperatures, uh, please let us know in the comments below how cold you went and if they were holding up good or not. Now, testing them in Florida here in 100 degree weather, of course, you do get a little bit of overheating, do get a little bit hot, but on the plus side, as you can see, there's a sand band special moisture wicking technology that is implemented here in the insole and also the sand band in the padding as well. So Irish Setter, they definitely thought about that one. Great job, great job there. Okay, let's talk about the criteria number six really quickly, the sizing. Absolutely perfect, true to the size. Um, in, in fact, I never had problems with uh, Red Wing shoes products with their sizing, they're always true to the size. And uh, I always recommend here to get half a size bigger than your normal shoe size, get your boots half a size bigger. So you have just a little bit of space here in the toe box, really helps whenever you're running. And you will definitely thank me on the decline if you're coming down a hill or a mountain, you will definitely remember me because that will save you from a lot of fatigue. If you're wearing your own size, and you're coming down the mountain on that decline, food smashing into the front of the toe box, it gets messed up pretty quickly. Keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the criteria number seven, kind of like a culmination here of this whole thing. Uh, balance of application. Basically, if this really was your ultimate survival boot, would this be a good boot to survive in? Honestly, I think so far this is one of the best, one of the best boots that I've reviewed on this channel for survival purposes especially for people that prefer more protection than lightness. I, I kind of divided people into two categories, you know, the, one, the ones that you can't go wrong with any, but the ones that prefer more lightness so they can move faster, run faster, longer, 
walk for extended periods of time, longer distances without getting tired, uh, just not a lot of restriction of the movement, but sacrificing some of the protection, sacrificing some of insulation maybe, some waterproofing, some extra protection on the bottom sole, on the toe, all of that sort of stuff. If that's what you are, you might want to look around for lighter boots. But honestly, honestly, even myself being a person who loves lightness compared to, you know, all of this bulkiness and, and protection, I honestly love these boots. I think I would, I think I wouldn't even mind that extra whatever seven ounce over 20 ounce limit, which I usually set for myself and recommend you guys if you prefer lightness because of how amazingly comfortable these boots are. Literally, I would recommend wearing, getting these boots wherever you live. If, if you live in the colder temperatures and you want these boots for winter, great. They are waterproof, they have insulation. But if you're like me, who lives full time in Florida, obviously, besides all the traveling that I do, but lives in Florida and does a lot of hiking through Florida woods. Honestly, I would take this out on a Florida hike as well, even in 100 degree, degree weather with this 400 grams of insulation. I know it sounds crazy, like it's overheating, but you just can't beat the comfort. And of course, you know, with the BOA system, I, I, I just think it's... I just think it's perfect for as an ultimate survival, you know, putting on fast is one of those qualities that you want in a boot because listen, if you have a boot and something bad happens and you need to put on your boots fast and you can because it takes forever to put them on, which a lot of boots do because of the longer shaft, eh, what's the point of that boot, right? So. Honestly, I absolutely love that boot. And the reason in the beginning I said, I don't think this is really a hiking boot, but, but more of a hunting boot. I think because it has those qualities of a hunting boot, I did review of another hunting boot, a very popular one, a Vapor Tech from um, Irish Setter, excellent boot as well, but it just didn't have as good of a feel as this one. This is, this is really just completely next level. This is much more superior. You can tell that, Irish Setter that did a lot of improvement. And the very last criterion that I wanted to mention here, I already mentioned it in the beginning, the price, $260, $280, depending on where you find it. Definitely on the pricier side, you can find it cheaper. You can find it, I've seen them go for about $220, $240. Uh, but the link is in the description below for Amazon if you wanna check it out, if you wanna check out their official website, maybe they have promotions going on, I don't know. Uh, definitely on the pricier side because there are a lot of good boots in there in the price range. For example, Quest 4D from Salomon, a very, very popular, very comfortable hiking boot, also has the same qualities. And there isn't really a lot of boots that can compete with Salomon Quest 4D, except this one. I think this one can. In the comfort level department, this can definitely compete with Salomon. <laughs> Pretty crazy, pretty amazing. I love it, absolutely love it. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think about this boot. Would you consider it for your hiking? Would you consider it for your hunting? I honestly would probably take it for both. Not even for both, for all three, Ultimate Survival as well. Definitely, they're easily in the top 10 of from all of the boots that I have so far reviewed on this channel. Definitely in the top 10. I absolutely love it. Uh, let me know your opinion. If you have any requests for reviews, drop them in the comments below. I always look out for those, put them on my special to-do list and try to do them as a priority. Thank you very much guys for watching. I appreciate your time. This was Firearms for America and I'll see you guys in the next video.